Romneycare was the model for Obamacare. Is that not true, Dr. Gruber? Uh, I believe it's true. I mean, for example, the tax consequences. Is it not true that right now in Massachusetts, uh, you know, you can be fined if you don't comply with Romney Care, and it's all run through the tax administration in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? It is true that if you don't have health insurance and don't meet certain exemptions in Massachusetts, you have to pay a tax penalty. Right. And uh, by the way, what happened to the uninsured percentage in Massachusetts? Did it go up? Did a lot of people lose their health care as predicted by the critics? The rate of uninsured fell by about two-thirds to 3%. 3%? How many other states have a 3% uninsured rate? Massachusetts is by far the lowest in the nation. Lowest in the nation. Now, there were also predictions that the fines were so relatively modest that employers would be tripping over each other to divest themselves of employee-provided insurance plans and just go onto the state exchange. Did that happen in Massachusetts? No, it did not. Employer-sponsored insurance actually rose by 10 percent in Massachusetts after we passed Romneycare. Mm. Um, can you explain the interpretation of your statement? And I'm going to read your statement. In the law, it says if the states don't provide them, the federal backstop will. The federal government has been sort of slow in putting out its backstop, I think partly because they want to sort of squeeze the states to do it. I think what's important to remember politically is if you're a state and you don't set up an exchange, that means your citizens don't get their tax credits. Opponents of the Affordable Care Act are using these remarks to further the argument that the law does not authorize tax credits for states that did not step up their own exchanges. Is that a correct interpretation of the law and of your statement? I don't believe it's a correct interpretation of either the law or of my statement. As I said in my opening remarks, my statement, while poorly worded and much too glib, but I believe the point I was making was that at the time I gave that statement, which was 2012, uh, it was not clear how effective the federal exchange would be. It was not even clear who would be in the White House to implement said federal exchange. And as a result, states might be concerned the federal exchange would not be implemented and they would have to set up their own exchange. Do you agree, Dr. Gruber, that uh, as written, the law makes tax credits available in every state regardless of whether the state or the federal government runs the exchange? In every, in every opportunity I've had to model or interpret the law, I've always made that assumption. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, my time is up. I'd like uh, unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter from Doug Elmendorf, the head of CBO, uh, to Chairman Issa, dated December 6, and an article by Tom Harkin, Ron Wyden, and Sandy Levin, George Miller, and Henry Waxman on the Affordable Care Act and what opponents are cherry-picking in terms of facts. Without objection, the, the I document. thank the chair.